so saying that, well, you know, as long as you have mostly legitimate scientists on, you know, having an occasional pseudoscientist or somebody who's going to promote a view which is almost certainly wrong is okay. Um, again, it's better than having even more pseudoscience on, but it's not optimal. Yeah, got um, it. Yeah, there, there's 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 no reason to platform somebody who is saying things that are probably not true, especially if you know if you're not able to counter you know to hold them to the truth, um, and or so you could do a couple of things, right? You can talk about Dr. Malone by an expert who knows the the, the source material. So you tell okay. us about Dr. Malone's claims, and you, and then if you want like to discuss the outrageous claims. You can do that with an expert who can put them into context, who understands the subtle scientific reasons where Dr. Malone departs from the mainstream views, you know, from from uh, where, where the, what the evidence is leading to. Uh, or you could have a debate format where you have two people on and you and you, at least then people will hear both sides. So you still may run into a false equivalency there. But at the you know, if you have. Uh, someone who's able to hold hold Dr. Malone, you know, to his statements and, you know, and and ex explain to the audience why, well, that's not true. And here's why that's better than just giving him an open platform. Um, even then that you could run into serious problems if the format isn't good. And because then you run into what we call the Gish Gallup, right? It's like creationists love going around debating evolutionists because in, in, in a, a, a so-called even format where both sides can just say whatever they want without any kind of format yeah. or filter or, uh, or, or debate, you know, rules, then you, you, the, the side spouting nonsense has a dramatic advantage because you can create, you know, a, a, a miss, a misperception or a misconception in seconds that would take a scientist minutes to fix to explain, well, that's wrong. Let me take 15 minutes to explain why that one thing you took three seconds to say is wrong. Meanwhile, yeah. you said 30 things that were wrong. I'm never going to get to all of them. And that's a that's an actual debating strategy that pseudoscientists use. They We call it the Gish Gallup because Dwayne Gish perfected that. He was a creationist, which made a career out of you know debating uh, evolutionary scientists. But if you have a, um, a uh, debate format where you can keep on one topic for a long enough time to go to the end of that topic, uh, more like a courtroom where there's rules of evidence and there, you know, and, and you will be held account to what you said and you can't just go off on a tangent. Then the truth and, you know, scientists have a distinct advantage because they're correct, you know, in that format. But in any case, these are all things that somebody who is, has millions of listeners and is producing, you know, an, an interview formatted podcast should know. And if they don't know, they should learn. And, you know, people who have experience as science communicators, as journalists, as interviews, et cetera, are, you know, it's, it's perfectly reasonable for them to point out, you know, you're doing it wrong. This is what you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, and that's essentially, I think, what a lot of people are doing. They're like, you know, all right, this guy's got millions of listeners. You know, he he should be holding himself to a higher standard. This is how he could do that. This is why what he's doing is counterproductive and it's directly harmful in the middle of a pandemic. But even outside of that context, it's still spreading nonsense. And this is this is how and why that happens.